I get it. It's typically warmer in Florida than everywhere else in the winter. But Florida is literally one of the only states that is escaping this latest round of winter weather. We've had ice. And we're about to get into a big blast of Arctic cold getting into the upcoming weekend. In Florida, though, we're escaping it for the most part through the end of the week. Near record warmth again on Thursday. It will turn cooler for the weekend, relatively speaking. We'll get into that. We're still watching the icy setup, though, across parts of the south, especially from Texas and Arkansas into parts of Tennessee. Behind that system, as it moves out, we're also going to break down a really significant blast of Arctic air, really for the northern tier of the country and then into the northeast specifically. We'll talk about who gets invaded by that more specifically uh, coming up towards the end of this video. This is what I'm talking about. Look. The yellows and oranges, that's where we have crazy warm air, near record warmth again through much of the state of Florida. This is going to continue through Thursday. It will turn a little cooler getting in to Friday as our cold front slides through. Nonetheless, look at this. 40s in St. Louis, single digits in Minneapolis. That is the start of this major Arctic blast that is going to funnel down from Canada and then into the Northeast over the next couple of days. I want to show you the reason for that. We had this big area of high pressure, this upper level ridge is kind of parked over the Florida Peninsula and to the parts of the Gulf of Mexico over Cuba as well. What this is doing is not only baking us by compressional heating as we get sinking air with these areas of high pressure, but it's also helping to deflect all of the cold and force it north. So all of these systems that have the potential to bring the chill as far south as Florida and into the Caribbean, the door is kind of shut here by that area of high pressure. Now that area does break down and move out towards the Atlantic, closer to Puerto Rico, towards the Antilles. And that allows some of this cooler air that is going to invade the northern tier of the country to sneak in to Florida. Nothing to write home about, though. It gets us back down to closer to where we should be through the Florida Peninsula. All right. At the surface, this is all tied into that big ice storm, this multi-day ice storm that we've really been pinpointing for the last few days. There is the high pressure at the surface. You see those winds coming out of the south. To get freezing rain, to get this ice, you need a very shallow layer of colder air. What that high pressure center is doing out over the Atlantic is pumping in warmth warmer air at a given pressure at the same pressure is less dense than colder air so it lifts up and over that dome of colder air at the surface and then you get that freezing rain and it's freezing rain that is the winter precip that nobody likes i don't think anybody likes ice here's how you get it again we have that overrunning as it's called so we have that shallow layer of cold air at the surface below 32 degrees but just above the surface, a couple thousand feet, we're talking about warmer air sliding in. That's because that high pressure to the east of the south, deep south, that is getting part of that ice storm. And as we have the precip falling into that warm layer, so everything starts out as snow way, way above our heads, thousands of feet up where the jet aircraft fly. As that falls through that warmer layer, the snow melts and turns into liquid rain. The cold air at the surface is so shallow, it does not have time to refreeze into an ice pellet or sleet, but instead it, it freezes on contact with anything that is below freezing. Roads, lawn furniture, cars, things like that. To get sleet, it's the same setup, but you do have a less, or you have a deeper layer of colder air near the surface, so there's time for that raindrop that is melted from the snow to refreeze, and that's where you get the tink, 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 the sleep pellets that are falling from the sky there. So some science for you, some meteorology behind that, but it's been an awful situation from Texas to parts of Tennessee and everywhere in between from that multi-day ice storm. So I want to show you, as we go into the future here, how intense this blast of cold is going to be, and it is going to be significant maybe the most significant since what we saw blast on through pre-Christmas. So look at this. As we move into 6 o'clock in the morning on Friday, these are the wind chills. There's going to be a lot of wind coming in with this. International Falls, it's going to feel more like 44 below. 34 degrees below zero in Minneapolis. 20 below in Bismarck. And then that starts to slide to the east. If you want to go to Florida, if you're not in Florida... 
Give this a thumbs up if you want to warm up. Let me know if you're loving the warmth or want this crazy bitter cold. Here we go Saturday morning, starting the weekend, 7 o'clock. It's still really cold in Minnesota, in Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Look at this, the core of this cold air. You see where the color drops out? The color table goes to 50 degrees below zero. Anywhere you see the land here, that is maxing out the color table. We're talking 50 to 60 degrees below zero when you factor in the wind. So again, this is an intense blast of cold. Burlington, Vermont could be feeling 40 to 50 degrees below zero when you wake up on Saturday morning. Caribou, Maine, more like 51 degrees below zero. So again, this blast of cold is going to be significant as it slides on through. Mentioned again for Florida, it is going to turn cold, relatively speaking though. Watch what happens as we get into Friday. There you go. As everybody is freezing in the northern tier of the country, again, Twin Cities, these are, these are the actual air temperatures now. So we took out the wind chill. These are what it will read on the thermometer. Six above for a high in Buffalo, New York, on Friday afternoon. But look at that in Orlando. Upper 60s and lower 70s. It will turn a touch cooler getting in to start the weekend. But nonetheless, I think a lot of everybody that's watching from outside of Florida will take that. 72 is right about average for Central Florida standards. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please give this a thumbs up. If you like talking about the weather, please consider subscribing as well. Would love to know where you're tuning in from. Post that in the comments section below. And if you are rooting for an early spring or six more weeks of winter, Phil officially spoke and he is forecasting six more weeks of winter. Now, of course, winter does come around in six weeks. That's what it means. So we're going to finish out the winter or get back into the early spring. He's right on the money over the next week. But as we get into the middle of February, I think the blowtorch comes back, especially in the east. And we're going to bring spring in a little early. Thank you guys again for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.